Hello sixth graders, we are in unit 3b, continuing with our rational numbers. The video today is about fractions and decimals. Our learning targets that we need to write down, all three of them here, I can write fractions as a decimal, I can write mixed numbers as a decimal, and I can write decimals as fractions. Just something to think about here before we get started. Um, what do you know about our number system? So how we do our counting and things like that. What is our number system based on? And it might help to think about place value. And if you look down here, our number system is based on powers of 10. So how will this help us with converting fractions and decimals to show equivalent numbers in different forms? So we're looking at those, um, anything after the decimal here is parts of a number everything in front of the decimal is whole. So this might be a little visual that you want to add into your notes. So the first thing to think about here is how we would write what we are reading when we are using place value. So we have some stuff in word form, 7 tenths as a fraction. Well, this 7 tells me that's my numerator. Tenths, that means we are out of 10 for our denominator. And that's it as a fraction. As a decimal, we went through this with place value. Tenths is the first spot after the decimal, so it would look like that. Thirty hundredths, well, that means 30 for my numerator over 100. So I'm just writing exactly what it is that I'm reading. Thirty hundredths, well, hundredths is after the decimal. Thirty, it ends in the hundredths place. 265 thousandths, well 265, that would be my numerator, thousandths, that tells me that my bottom number is 1,000, and then with decimal, it needs to end in the thousandths place, which is tens, hundred, thousandths, third spot after the decimal, 265, ending in the thousandths place, Re writing exactly what we are reading on the other side. Something to note here that we should write down. If the denominator of a fraction is a factor of 10, 100,000, or any higher power of 10, so 10,000, 100,000, so on and so forth, you can use mental math and place value to convert. So there's an example here, 25 hundredths. We can write that just as the fraction 25 over 100 because we know that that's what our denominator is. Okay, so something to note, make sure you've got that written down in your notebook. So here we are trying to write these fractions as, or mixed numbers as a decimal, um, and we're trying to do this with mental math. So what we want to do is we want to get this denominator to be one of our tens, tens, hundred, thousands, because if we get that, then we can very easily switch it over to a decimal. So if I look at this, I could try to get it to 10 by dividing by 2, but I can't divide 7 by 2, so that won't work. So instead, I'm going to have to make it into 100. And in order to do that, let me erase that, I know that 20 times 5 equals 100, um, and 7 times 5 would be 35. So that means as a decimal, 35 hundredths, I can now write it just as I said it, 35 hundredths, ending right there in the hundredths place. Okay. 5 and 3 fourths, we have a mixed number here, so I'm going to think about it as two separate parts. 5 and then 3 fourths. Well, 4 I know can multiply into 100 if I think about quarters. If I multiply that by 25, whatever I do to the bottom, I also do to the top to turn it into an equivalent fraction. So this would be 75 over 100. So my 5 is a whole number, so I have that out front instead of a 0 like I did on the last one, my decimal. 75 hundredths, well, 75, ending in the hundredths place. Okay. couple here for you to try. Pause on your own and try them, or as I go through them, follow along with me. So 3 tenths, I already have a denominator that's a nice 10 hundred thousand, so I don't have to do anything. If I just read it three tenths, that tells me how to write it as a decimal with the three in the tenths place. Don't have to even do anything with that one. Okay. 320, um, 3 over 25, I know 25 times 4 is 100, so I can multiply the top by that as well. So again, you're trying to find a number 
you're trying to get to your denominator to be ten hundred thousandths, so on and so forth, to make it easy to turn into a decimal. So three times four is 12, 12 over 100, which would be 12 hundredths, which means it's written just like that, 12 hundredths, ends in the hundredths place. Okay, six and a half. So a half is one that we wanna know off the top of our head right away, but if we don't, I know that I can either multiply it by five to get to 10, or I could multiply it by um, 50 to get to 100. So if I multiply by 5, again the 6 stays out front, then I would have 5 tenths is my new fraction. So 5 tenths ends right there. And like I said, it's a whole number out front, so it stays whole number out front of the decimal. So we are going to have an equivalent fraction um, chart here that we're going to keep track of in class because some of the ones we want to know right away without even having to really think about it. So make sure that as we fill that out that you have it handy for you, okay? So they have some here that would be helpful for us to know without even really having to think about it, okay? Now, something here that we want to write down, any fraction can be write, written as a decimal. Even if the bottom number doesn't easily go into 10, 100,000, all that we have to do, write this down, is to divide the numerator by the denominator. Division ends when the remainder is zero. So when there's nothing left, um, if it just keeps going, then that's when we write it with a repeating decimal sign. Okay, so we're gonna turn three eighths into a decimal. Eight does not nicely go into tens, hundred, thousands. So we are gonna need to do division. So we're gonna put the numerator, our top number on the inside, our denominator, which is 8, on the outside. Now, 8 cannot go into 3, so I add a decimal and I add a 0, carry my decimal up above. 8 goes into 30 three times, which would be 24. Do my subtraction, so I'm just practicing my long division here. A 6, add a 0 to drop down. Um, 8 goes into 60 seven times, which would be 56. Do my subtraction, which is four. Add a zero. I just keep going until it either stops or I start repeating. Eight goes into 45 times. Five times eight is 40. Do my subtraction, nothing left over, nothing else to bring down. So three eighths as a decimal is equal to 375 thousandths. <clears throat> Next one, one fortieth. 40 doesn't easily go into 10, 100,000. Now, if we could divide this by um, 4 to get 10, that would work, but we cannot divide 1 by 4. So that way wouldn't work. You would end up with a decimal, and we don't want that. So we're going to have to do some division. Um, numerator goes on the top, denominator on the outside. 40 can't go into 1, so I put a zero, add a decimal, and add a zero behind it. 40 goes into 10 zero times. Zero times 40 is zero. Do my subtraction, I get 10, add a zero. 40 goes into 100 twice. Two times 40 is 80. Do my subtraction, 100 divided by 80 is 20. Add a decimal, or add a zero, drop it down. If I count by 40s, 40, 80, 100, I could do it that way. Or if I ignore the zero on my 40 and the last zero on there, I know that 4 goes into 25 times. So that means 40 would go into 200 five times. 40, 80, 100. Um, no, that's not right. 40, 80, 120, 160, 200, five times. Do my subtraction. Nothing else to bring down. That is my answer. All right, three here for you to try on your own or to follow along and make sure you have in your notebook. Um, if you are unsure of what to do, then just follow along with me. Seven eighths, eight can't go into 10 hundred thousand easily, so we're gonna have to do some division. Seven on the inside, denominator on the outside. Eight can't go into seven, so we add a decimal and a zero. Um, eight goes into 70, that would be eight times. I gotta carry my decimal up above. Eight times eight is 64. 
do my subtraction. 70 minus 64 is 6. Add a 0. 8 goes into 67 times, which would be 56. Do my subtraction. Um, that would be 4. Add a 0, which is 40. 8 goes into 40 five times. 5 times 8 is 40. Subtract. Nothing else to bring down, so 7 eighths is equal to 875 thousandths. 2 and 1 eighth, I'm going to ignore the 2 for now and just figure out what 1 eighth equals. So I have to do division. Can't go into 1. Bring my decimal up. Goes into 10 once, which is 2. Add a 0. 8 goes into 20 twice, which is 16. Do my subtraction, which is 4, add a 0. 8 goes into 45. 5 times 8 is 40. Do your subtraction. Nothing else to bring down, so we have 125 thousandths. Now I have to remember the 2 out front, so my answer would be 2 and 125 thousandths. 7 and 9 twentieths. Again, ignore the 7 for now. Focus on the 9 twentieths. So... Um, numerator on the inside, denominator on the outside. 20 goes into 9 zero times. Add a decimal and a zero. Carry your decimal up above. 20, 40, 60, 80. That's four times that it can fit into 90 without going over. Four times 20 is 80. Do your subtraction. 90 minus 80 is 10. Add a zero. 20 into 100 would be 5. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Do your subtraction. Nothing else to bring something down, so we have 45 hundredths. So my answer, the 7 and 45 hundredths. I'm just putting the 7 with my decimal answer. So that's what you do if you cannot easily turn in, which if I look now, 20, I could have easily multiplied by 5 and would have got 45 over 100. So that one I didn't even need to divide. All right, here's the vocab that we need to have written down. Um, terminating and de repeating, terminating decimals and repeating decimals. These you might already know, but we still do need to have them written down. So a terminating decimal is um, a decimal whose digits end. So it eventually comes to an end where repeating decimal have a pattern um, in their digits that repeats forever. Okay, doesn't end. It just keeps going forever and ever. And we write those repeating decimals with this bar notation that we have down here. You can use bar notation to indicate that a number pattern repeats indefinitely, so it repeats forever. A bar is written o only over the digits that repeat. So we have some examples here. So you should have that definition down as well. And the examples. So on this one, we have the three that continues forever. So we could write it as 0 0.3 bar notation. And then this one repeats 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2. So you would just put the bar notation over the 1 and 2, showing that that's the part that repeats. Now on this one, it goes 3, 8, 5, 8, 5, 8, 5. And if you look over here, the 8 and the 5 are the only part that has the bar notation because that's the only part that's repeating. So make sure you have these vocab written down. All right, so now we have somewhere they might end up repeating. So 9 doesn't nicely go into 10 100 thousand, so we got to do some division. So 9 can't go into 7, add a decimal and a 0, carry the decimal up above. 9 goes into 70, that would be what, 7 times? 7 times 9 is 63. Do your subtraction, 63 minus, or 70 minus 63, add a 0. 9 goes into 70 seven times, which is 63. And if you notice, we're just going to have it keep going. Oops. It's just going to keep repeating again and again. So instead of dividing forever, once we start noticing this pattern, we could just write it as 0 
point seven with the bar notation over the seven. You only need to include one because it's going to show that that just keeps on repeating. Okay, so now there's some here for you to try. Um, the division is the same as we were doing before, but now you're either going to write it as um, a, or you're going to write it as a decimal. Use bar notation if you need to. So two thirds. Two goes inside the parentheses. Three goes into two zero times. Add a decimal and a zero. Goes into 26 times, which would be 18. Following the same steps I've been doing this entire time. And again, I see, oh, it's going to keep on repeating. So instead of dividing forever, I would write it 6 tenths with bar notation over the 6. Next one, 3 elevenths. 11 can't go into 3. Um, 11 goes into 33 twice, which would be 22. Do your subtraction. 8 goes in there 7 times, which would be 77. Goes into 30 twice, which would be 22. Goes in there seven times, and if I notice, it's going to start repeating. So the way I would write this one now, I'm going to change colors, um, 0 0.27, and you put the bar notation over both 2 and 7, showing that it's going to keep going, 2, 7, 2, 7, 2, 7. All right, last one, one third. 3 goes into 1, it can't. Goes into 10 three times, which is 9 goes into 10 three times, which is 9, goes into three, or 10 three times. Again, it's just going to keep on repeating. So I have the 8 out front, so I need to keep that. 8 is my whole number. Now for the decimal, the 3 repeats. So 3 with bar notation over tells me that it's going to be 8.3 repeated forever. So anytime a number repeats, bar notation over the top. All right, if you are stuck or confused, go back and re-watch parts of the video that you were stuck on. Come with uh, questions tomorrow to class.